Welcome everyone to my talk today, ICS security operations, active defense concept with effective incident response in industrial control systems. This is John Kurnas. My name is pronounced as John, which is pretty close in English and John. And I am working as a OT security consultant and I have GICSB, OSCP, OSWPN certified as the hacker certifications. Uh, my bachelor is computer engineering and my master is cybersecurity. And you can reach me on Twitter and LinkedIn and GitHub, uh, as you can see here. I am, of course, a bit nervous about the presentation. And let's take a deep breath and have some relaxation. Then we can continue. OK, what's today's agenda? So I will discuss a bit on active defense concept. And I will explain briefly threat intelligence, asset identification and network security monitoring, instant response for ICS, and then taking the advantage of found threats. So what is active defense concept? It is something like this, yes, improvising, adapting and overcoming as beer grills. But yeah, it is also related to this picture but in general, what I can explain is somewhere in the middle in here in the picture, uh, it is the process of analysts monitoring for, responding to and learning from adversaries internal to the network. So basically that means it is a combination of analyzing the adversaries as uh, steps and monitoring constantly to the, to the internal network. And then when you see any anomalies responding to that, and basically when you see an, any action, uh, basically create uh, lessons learned and learn from the adversaries. It is not uh, deployable by itself, of course. It is built on the top of the good practices, such as uh, good architecture and then the passive defense. And it's not definitely a hack pack. So you need to stay on your internal network to protect and you don't need to, you don't have to uh, attack back to the adversaries, of course. So why active defense is needed? Uh, as we can see, uh, at least for a couple of years, traditional methods of protection without constant human interaction, such as firewalls, IPS, and antiviruses, only provides a certain level of security. And adversaries are getting stronger and stronger every day, and the passive defense usually don't stop them, unfortunately. So, when we take a look to the active cyber defense cycle, it consists of uh, four elements, threat intelligent conception and asset identification and network security monitoring. Uh, then incident response when it's necessary and using uh, threat and environment manipulation to get over the adversaries. Basically this uh, diagram is coming from the uh, SANS and the references down, down there. So basically the idea is monitoring your area of responsibility, uh, which is quite necessary to at least have the, uh, let's say idea of the getting the baselines, then checking the anomalies. And that, that said implementing monitoring will bring you the chance for quick response when it's necessary, when you see something odd. And responding to incidents and attacks on time is of course crucial because especially on the industrial control systems, if it affects the industrial control network, it's gonna cost you a lot. And constant changes are necessary since you, you need to beat the adversaries and kick them out of your uh, industrial control network. And after that, you need to share and you need to consume the lessons learned. At least you need to share with the community and you need to observe and collect the lessons learned from the community to develop better defenses on your, on your systems, on your ICS. So what is threat intelligence? I'm, gonna, I'm trying to explain this uh, pretty quick. Let's start with the intelligence. So intelligence uh, basically means the process of collecting data, turning into information and producing an assessment that uh, satisfies a previously identified uh, knowledge gap. So you need to uh, obtain 
the, the from the raw data to important uh, information. So normally you can do the, yeah, everybody can say yeah you can you can do this with the tools, but unfortunately tools can only help and your analysts can create intelligence, not the tools. And intelligence life, life cycle, when we take a look to the intelligence life cycle, it starts with planning and direction, then collection, then processing and exploitation. Uh, exploitation here means, doesn't look like uh, the exploitation in the computer science. It is more like uh, clarifying and uh, filtering the information that you need that it that that make it useful and then analysis and production and dissemination and integration basically the intelligent life cycle consists of these elements and then if we if we discuss about the open source intelligence it is a type of intelligence which is quite useful for adversaries as well as also for you uh, it is low cost and low impact, but it gives essential information about you. So most of the time adversaries are Googling on the internet, and checking uh, related uh, documents and data about you, but you can also use this as your own benefic uh, beneficial uh, by, by checking these documents and trying to reduce your threat landscape. Normally these sources can be public relation documents uh, that you're uh, or partnership announcements that you share. Most of the time, uh, these documents are not considered dangerous, but they are dangerous because they contain valuable information. Um, company information, of course, the, if the company is a public company and is, it, if the company shares monthly or quarterly or I don't know, annual reports, these reports also have valuable information about the company. Uh, most of the time, job descriptions uh, basically leak the technologies, of course. And advisories and alerts sometimes also might be related to your systems and give some hints about your systems. And of course, your internet connected devices. These are the uh, most, most dangerous things. So Threat intelligence, if you continue with the threat intelligence in simple terms, again, threat intelligence is analyze information related to your adversaries that have intent, capability, and opportunity to harm you. So that specific type of intelligence give defenders knowledge of the adversary, their actions within the defender's environment and the capabilities as well as their tactics, techniques, and procedures. And the threat intelligence is often shared in different uh, methods, for example, indicators of compromise, IOCs, as I mentioned, tactics, techniques, and procedures, TTPs, and oftentimes complete report about an incident or an attack. And what do we need to do to identify our threat landscape? Threat landscape is a combination of information attack space threat groups, industry, and non-technical influences. So basically to identify your threat landscape, you need to ask yourself who is interested to attack your organization and why, uh, what, would be, what would be the reason of causing damage and how can they get into to your organization? And after you identify the threat landscape, you need to reduce the threat landscape. And most of the times asset and network identification is necessary to succeed. First of all, you need to clarify your external and internal landscapes because uh, you need to focus on your uh, responsibility areas. And as well as uh, you, need, you, you would have some connections from third party vendors or, or um, any other third party uh, service providers, etc. Then using known information, uh, you need to uh, try to reduce uh, your threat landscape, basically by checking these information and trying to prevent any leaking uh, information like that uh, and performing assessments and measurements also with the third party companies or, or external companies, because sometimes you need to have a second opinion or second eye to, to, to check that. And after that, you need to continue uh, doing these again and again. 
to reduce your landscape. An external threat, threat intelligence is uh, the threat intelligence comes from the specialized teams, which can be uh, professional services companies, um, such as Dragos, and or it could be from ICS search such, and other search. Basically, provides indicator of compromises and TTPs, and most of the time it is for large audiences. It might not be relevant for you, but still, uh, it is important to follow these. Uh, threat intelligence uh, reports, um, but sometimes, of course, uh, the industry is not relevant for you and you don't need to take an action. But oftentimes, ICS threat intelligence are limited. It's really hard to find, uh, especially purely ICS threat intelligence, but when you find it, it's priceless, really priceless. And ICS search, uh, multiple ISACs and old ISACs pro can provide Sun's uh, Internet Storm Center also providing uh, threat intelligence, threat feeds, and reports from vendors and professional service companies, uh, as I mentioned, like from Mandiant or from, from Dragos, for example, or FireEye. And what is internal threat intelligence? An internal threat intelligence comes from your data. Uh, it is usable against the current problems in your environment because the data is just coming from your environment and after you analyze, you basically realized there are some problems and it's directly relevant to your issues. But it requires personnel in order to do the analysis and it requires specialized skills such as malware and threat analysis. And if you, if you summarize the threat intelligence, um, tactical threat intelligence contains TTPs and IOCs, which are quite useful to add, uh, change and implement your defense, or at least uh, search for intrusions in your environment. And strategic threat intelligence can be used to look overall patterns, suspected attribution, trends and teams. It is also useful to identify where your defense might fail or already failing. So if you go for asset identification and network security monitoring, uh, the purpose and importance of the asset identification is it is really hard to defend if you don't know what you have in your plant, in your facility or in your environment in general, because if you don't know what's there, you cannot protect it basically. And advanced security solutions that you have also not effective if you can't provide the whole map to defend. So you need to at least provide the fundamental security uh, uh, to, to have this. And network security monitoring, threat intelligence, and instant response usually works better if you have the network knowledge, if you have internal network knowledge. And how do we identify the assets in the ICS network then? We can say, uh, first, we need to start de determining the area of responsibility because as I mentioned, most of the times there are some remote connections that you need, you shouldn't uh, include uh, because yeah, of course, uh, VPN endpoints on your side, that can be count uh, on, your, uh, on your responsibility, but still there are some ways that goes to outbound and not in your responsibility anymore. And then finding and utilizing the existing information. Uh, for example, if you already have some uh, network diagrams that you have, you need to start with this, then you can validate no known information. And if it's not sufficient, and if you think you need to, let's say, create a new one, you can try to collect by doing physical inspection, which is normally a bit harder and takes much more time. You can do traffic analysis in your ICS network, uh, passive analysis that we can also say. Uh, we can do configuration file analysis and we can do active scanning, which is not recommended, uh, except you are, let's say, you are not in the production, uh, not in the production, or if you are on the, uh, if you are in the turnaround, you can do that, but otherwise it's a bit dangerous. And then collecting the data in all the assets, you need to document it again, in order to have a nicely done diagram and have the old assets. And unfortunately, most of the ICS networks are flat networks. You, you'll notice that once, you, once you've done the asset uh, identification, 
Um, after identifying the assets, it's often required to have a physical or logical separation or both. It is quite necessary since it makes makes more difficult to adversaries to pivot in your network. Otherwise, if it's flat network, normally a game would be over within, let's say, uh, half an hour or, or one hour. For the active defense concept, it is really crucial because you need to build on top of the good architecture and passive defense. Um, at least for me, the aim would be uh, separating the network as explained in purging model. So it could be a good reference to start with. And then if you want to uh, have more and more separation, then you can, micro, you can use micro segmentation, et cetera. But it is the fundamental for the ICS networks. And network security monitoring is a continuous process uh, to collect, detect, analyze indication of threats in order to respond faster to incidents and attacks in your network. Uh, it is threat centering approach instead of traditional vulnerability centering approach. Uh, network security monitoring requires dedicated personnel as analysts, and it also requires preparation for uh, infrastructure and also tools ahead of time. And it brings proactive approach to security and detection of the threats. So um, you can, you can uh, take some remediations once you identify the, uh, the issues in your network. And network security monitoring provides visibility and helps you to identify the changes and anomalies uh, might, not, might not be relevant to only adversaries, but also um, some misconfigurations for troubleshooting misconfigurations. And it helps you to detect intrusion attempts and movements within SCADA, uh, ICS SCADA networks. And it can evaluate separation and segregation for levels that you have and zones that you have. And it can help fine tuning and validating the settings of passive defense elements. For example, checking the firewall rules and to, to see if it's correctly implemented or missing some points, etc. And it also can help reduce the threat landscape by hardening non-required ports and services since you are seeing this when you are doing the network security monitoring and you can instantly take remediation. Um, network security monitoring is more useful in ICS networks since all the assets are, most of the assets are critical. And most of the times uh, all the assets or, or any assets cannot be immediately patched because yeah, we know ICS networks are quite, uh, let's say untouchable. And then you need to have any, 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 any other layer to, to have the protection for your uh, endpoints, etc. And ICS networks have may, many dependencies and connections such as enterprise network connection, vendor connections, business applications, uh, contractor VPNs. And it is, it is really valuable to monitor these external parties for anomalies because once your vendor or once your contractor, uh, let's say compromised, it is just a moment to jump into your network by using these VPNs. And normally you don't have any, any vision on these connections without the active defense. And detection approaches, uh, most of the time what we uh, check is identifying the most used IP addresses and ports used within the network. To, to create basically a baseline, uh, identifying biggest bandwidth users, identifying encrypted communication, because most of the times command and concu uh, uh, centers are using encrypted uh, communications. And identifying the critical assets and usual traffic is also important to, to continue on the, on the baseline to have a stability on that. And identifying network anom anomalies, of course, and identifying lowest bandwidth and communication because sometimes you can see in the network uh, unusual traffic, which could be pretty less than your usual levels. And of course, you need to identify exfiltration. You, uh, you, you, you need to check that when you are doing the detection. And asset identification and network security monitoring takeaways. Asset identification and network security monitoring is the key for active defense concept. 
uh, network security monitoring is a great approach for ICS because most of the ICS networks are quite stable and basically you can uh, once you create a baseline it is easy to to to, to let's say uh, monitor and these two elements support implementation of better architecture and passive defense uh, once you implement that yeah you can take a look uh, back and you can let's say uh, improve your your basic fundamental security also detection often relies on the sensors and ics network uh, you need to be sure that you need to detect the baseline changes anomalies and ids rules because these can basically warn you when you are doing the detection and logs and visibility are really important but yeah you, you need to have any an, an analyst to let's say uh, contribute value on that because by itself logs and visibility doesn't give you the chance that that you you can prevent and analysts need to follow it constantly and verify it if there is any anomaly and network security monitoring will eventually lead to instant response you need to be ready for instant response by saying that instant response for ics uh, it is a bit different comparing to uh, usual IT incident response because um, you can simply you cannot simply bring down the systems during the uh, incident response when you're doing uh, when you're working on ICS networks and the focus is a bit different by saying that maintaining safe and reliable operations is the most important thing acquiring meaningful forensic data within a limited time performing uh, timely analysis and containing and eradicating the threats. Basically, these are the four elements that you need to follow when you're doing the ICS incident response. And before that preparation, uh, there are some, some uh, steps that you need to follow. Preparation, same as traditional IT, but with some limitations such as testing tools, testing methods, but in a lab. Integrated detection and identification, working with network security monitoring team to implement rules and detection capabilities which is tailored to, your, to the threat in order to identify impacted systems. And evidence acquisition, acquisition, acquisition sorry, acquisition. Um, normally you, you don't have that much time, like on IT side, you don't have that much time to do the forensic analysis because you cannot stop uh, the, the operations. Here the focus is maintaining operations while acquiring enough evidence to perform later. You will do the deep forensic analysis later. And time critical analysis using fast and well tested uh, techniques to quickly determine uh, the overall impact to the operations. And supported activities. Uh, IR teams mostly share information and evidence. All the evidence should be passed to other teams to begin deep analysis and continue on the uh, active defense cycle. And containment, preser preserving the operations by collaborating with other teams operators and also engineers on the field. Uh, eradication and recovery, you need to neutralize the threat by, for example, reimagining the system, reinstalling known good software, implementing patches. And then you need to provide the lessons learned, which is uh, documents uh, finding for all past information to the network security monitoring team uh, in order to identify and see if there is any reinfection, etc. And how do you prepare an incident response team? Uh, you need to determine the requirements and dependencies within your facility. Uh, for example, uptime, availability, and specific systems you need to uh, take care. Uh, you need to decide if it's gonna be in-house or outsourced. There are some advantages on both sides, um, but yeah, you need to decide, uh, at least have a couple of people in, in, in your facility to do it more faster. A team size, three, four well-trained people on site would be enough to cover, but you also need to uh, think about the shifts, etc. So in total, it needs to be at least eight to 10 people. So chain of command is really important because there will be chaos and someone needs to uh, communicate with the management team, etc. And it should be instant response director. Then all the evidence and incident handlers need to report to lead responder and the chain of command needs to go up and down like this. And 
to, to build your ICS incident response team, you need to find the right personnel. Uh, of course, it's the hardest part um, because incident response is really, really tough subject to, to focus and develop yourself. And then also you need to take care of uh, your jump kits because often jump kits, when, when, you, need, when you need it during the incident, uh, most of the time you are losing some parts from the jump kit. Uh, it's it's easy to borrow from the jump kit, and then when you go to when you go to the incident, you are missing a couple of hard disks, etc. When you need it on over there, so it's it's important. So evidence acquisition, acquisition. Sorry, <laughs> uh, you need to take care uh, of the order of volatility, and you need to decide if it's going to be local or remote acquisition. I would prefer local because it's uh, less risk and more uh, more fast faster. The tool should be tested before on uh, on on the, on the systems because we are not talking about uh, regular IT systems. Acquisition should be coordinated with all involved personnel, and you need to discuss beforehand when you are touching any field device with engineers and operators. Uh, you need to gather all the evidence if the time permits. Uh, you, you need to start from registry and then any, uh, any memory and then taking the disk images, for example. And you need to take necessary photos in order to see on the, on the, on the, on the let's say, uh, devices. If you see any command prompt, you need to uh, have an evidence because once you uh, turn it off, you will lose it or you can lose it in any second. And all the data should be analyzed in an approved facility. Uh, what are the sources for the forensic data in ICS networks? Highly vol uh, volatile data, system memory, network information, and system processes, and VPN connections, and these logs, and registry hives, uh, HMIs, uh, mostly Windows computers, and you can have system logs, etc. Engineering workstations, uh, controllers such as PLCs and RTUs, and sometimes virtual resources so, uh, such as VMs and cloud environment if it's connected. And you need to do the high quality instant response uh, in a timely manner. It's, it's really important in ICS when you are doing this. Uh, timely analysis is important to keep operations safe and reliable. It should uh, focus on understanding the scope and then the type of incident. And the baseline information comparison will be really helpful when you do that. And focusing on the new connections increase in, increase uh, in the bandwidth, new new routes, anomalies in the VPN connections, change register keys, spawn processes. You need to check these first. And asset identif identification and network security monitoring help to respond quickly. And ut utilize good tools to reduce the analysis period. This is also important. You need to do the practice before going to the real incident. And how do you use threat intelligence in the instant response? Uh, indicator of compromise to scope the infected systems. Then after that, you need to identify the network data on host and uh, TTPs to identify adversary effort, efforts. And you, you, you need to utilize to ensure threats are gone after you've done the incident response. And instant response takeaways. Uh, you need to focus uh, on providing actionable information about the scope of the threat and its potential impacts while you are acquiring the evidence without breaking operations and safety. Um, ICS instant response should be tailor-made. It's a bit different than the IT, as I mentioned. Uh, efforts must align with the goals and requirements of the operations. This is the first priority. Uh, preparation should be done ahead of time. You really need to practice before it, ha it really happens and acquired evidence and lessons learned should be shared with other personnel. So once you get evidence, you need to share it to complete, to, to move forward the, the active defense cycle. And let's summarize this, taking the advantage of the found threats. Once you complete uh, instant response, if we can safely interact and understand with the threat, we can have the best source of defense information from the adversaries best capability. We can feed the active cyber defense center with the, with the found uh, threat intelligence to build better defense. It is important to identify and use indicator of compromises from the threats to help incident response. 
and understanding the malware's tactics to identify weaknesses in the current ICS architecture is valuable because after that you need to improve your architecture. So these, these steps are really valuable. And my last uh, presentation is about lessons learned sessions for long-term success. For the success of active defense, uh, active cyber defense cycle, lessons learned should be shared between the teams internally and also necessary actions uh, needs to be taken to build better defense. And after that, uh, either during the, during the uh, incident and after the incident. And after that, once you share it internally, uh, it's also recommended to share your lessons learned in an appropriate way uh, with the ICS community, because if you had that threat, uh, someone else might, might get this soon. So it is, it is really important and valuable. And yeah, I think I'm just on time. Uh, thank you very much that, uh, for, for listening to me. If you have any questions, uh, either you can send me a message from LinkedIn or Twitter, or you can ask now. Thank you. John, this is... In there. Okay. So everybody, I uh, look forward to uh, see John and ask questions and all sorts of different things um, on the DEF CON Discord server. We're in the ICS Village subgroup. Um, and Jean, thank you very much. That was a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.